Country and Cold Cans. I'm Logan. Be sure to go follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And uh, make sure you give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe, share, give us a good review. If you don't want to give us a re- re- good review, fuck off. Um, and make sure you go to Spotify and smash that follow button. And we'll keep having new episodes for you. All right, Andy. Howdy, welcome fuckers. Fuck. Welcome back, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Live and in person for the also, first time. Also sitting here time. with Kyle. Howdy. And, uh, once again, making his return back to country in cold cans. Classic Rock Carter. Yo. Coming to you live from the side pocket. From the side pocket. Live from the country in cold cans studio. That's right. A.K.A. my basement. The, the brand new studio sitting here on a pool table. Yes. This is Just, why we need you to hit that follow button so we can afford a real exactly. table. We're at oh, a pool yeah. table, so guys, that may, but don't be playing pocket pool. No yeah, you, hey, you got to be telling side pocket Carter over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so speaking of that, it's a good transition. I did want to bring up the fact that, uh, you know, Kyle, I know you know all about it. We've talked a little, little bit about it on uh, Country and Coke Hands here. Andy and Carter, how familiar are you with the name Jeffrey Tubin? Only from when y'all talked about him on a previous podcast. Okay, Carter? Not familiar at all. Okay, so uh, just to give you a little synopsis here before we um, I play the clip. Um, Jeffrey Tubin is a legal analyst, analyst on... Um, CNN. Analyst. <laughs> analyst. <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's a legal analyst on CNN. And um, he also, it, once upon a time, about seven months ago actually, was working for the New Yorker as well, where he had been for like 20 plus years. They were on a Zoom call on a meeting with coworkers. Homie decides, they were like, you know, we're going to have a little bit of a break. He said, I thought my camera was off, but he got the urge. And he started tubing it. Yes. If you know what I mean. As you can you can search yourself uh, if you go to UrbanDictionary.com uh, and ser- search Tubin. It is a verb for masturbating on a Zoom call. Masturbating on a Zoom call. That is an actual verb in Jeffrey the Tubin. Urban Dictionary. Well, he got fired from the New Yorker, as you would expect, right? But CNN, on the other hand, the wonderful network that they are, <laughs> decided to only just suspend him for seven months. Well, the great legal analyst himself... Jeffrey Tubin made his grand return to CNN television this past week. And uh, I'm going to now play the clip for you guys, and then we'll talk about it briefly before we jump back into more music-related affairs. Jeffrey? Hello, Allison. It's been a while. It has been a while, indeed. I feel like we should address um, what's happened in the months since we've seen you, since some of our viewers may not know what has happened. So uh, I guess I'll recap. I'll do the honors. (laughs) Help yourself. Okay. Um, In October, you were on a Zoom call with your colleagues from the New Yorker magazine. Everyone took a break for several minutes, during which time you were caught masturbating on camera. Uh, You were subsequently fired from that job after 27 years of working there. And you, since then, have been on leave from CNN. Do I have all that right? Um, You got it all right. Sad to say. Okay, so let's start there. Okay. Um, to quote Jay Leno, what the hell were you thinking? Well, obviously, uh, I wasn't thinking very well or very much, and um, it was something that was inexplicable to me. I think one point, I, I wouldn't exactly say in my defense, because nothing is really in my defense, I didn't think I was on the call. I didn't think other people could see me. You so, thought that you had turned off your camera? Uh, correct. I thought that I had turned off the Zoom call. Now, that's not a defense. This was deeply moronic and indefensible. But, I mean, that, that, is, part of, that, that is part of the story. Um, and, you know, I have spent the seven subsequent months, miserable months in my life, I can certainly confess, um, trying to be a better person. I mean, in therapy, trying to do some public service, um, working in a food bank, which I certainly am going to continue to do, working on a new book about the Oklahoma City bombing. But I am trying to become the kind of person that people can trust again. I'm sure you've replayed that embarrassing moment over and over many times. Um, Have you ever thought about what it must have been like to be on the receiving end of that Zoom call? Um, Well, I I haven't just thought about it. I've spoken to several of my former colleagues at The New Yorker about it. And, you know, they uh, were shocked and appalled. Um, I think 
they realized that this was not intended for them. I think they realized that this was um, something that I would immediately regret, as, as I certainly did. And it was then, it was that day that I began apologizing. And that is something that I have tried to continue to do, uh, both publicly and privately. You know, I seen him bringing this cat back on there. He was literally servicing himself. Or no, to, in the to start. Of call. First no, of all. It, it, for context, it wasn't during a CNN call. It was during a call when he was working with the New Yorker, right? Yes. But, like, he still was, like, exposing himself and... Um, choking the chicken. Choking the chicken, so to speak, in front of people. And, like, my, my thing is... Uh, when wh- who was that? Was that Allison Camerota that was inter- interviewing? Yes. Allison yeah. So when, when Allison was like, you know, do you want to me to explain what happened? He goes, "Help yourself." No, <laughs> you, you could tell she was. It was so awkward for her. She was so uncomfortable having to talk about that right to his face, and he was just sitting there smiling with that little smirk on his face. Well, the first time he's done that. Yeah, it almost was like he was a little proud of it, almost, or he was having to really just. Swallows pride, I suppose. I can almost, it almost seemed like that might have been a condition of him being rehired back. Okay. Yeah. My first question if you're seeing it, first, why would you ever bring this what up? What do you again? have to gain? Why wouldn't you well, not no, just no. never what, mention what it you, again? What do you have to gain from keeping Tubin on the page? And my next thing is if you're, if you're the Tubin, why would you ever agree to the talk about man. this on TV? <laughs> right, so it, his name has become a verb. Yes, now. it is a verb now. It's Tubin it. Uh, so there's there's a multifacet here, Dee Barry. Mm-hmm. One, he's a legal analyst. Yeah. He's not your heavyweight, sure, prime time correspondent, so to speak, opinion host. Right. No one cares about this guy. <laughs> they would they did just fine, I would say. But my Air question is, 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 I'm is glad he, they brought him back on. Oh, it's, is, is, he he only, now. is he the only legal analyst that is possible to hire? I'm sure there are thousands. I mean, how many people are lining up I, to work for CNN? I think the, the one thing that he said, well, <laughs> <laughs> probably a lot, Andy. <laughs> Doubt that. You were fake news. <laughs> 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 no, like, what, what's funny is, like, he was literally sitting there and saying, these last seven months, they've been miserable months. He goes, I've been doing a lot of soul searching. I've been volunteering at the soup kitchen. That's problematic. That is. Itself. Yeah. There's something in the clam chowder. <laughs> I've, been, I've been writing a it's book. A little thicker about, than usual. I've been writing a book about the Oklahoma City bombings. That's a little concerning. <laughs> I mean, I got so, so the guy chokes the chicken in front of people and immediately takes in his uh, sabbatical. He goes and like, you know, I'm going to write a book about a the book. Oklahoma City bombings. I would, I would like to offer a Word of advice, especially to our younger listeners, if if you're out there. Don't jack off on Zoom. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's <laughs> got to be done right this minute, excuse yourself to the restroom. Yeah. Really, that's simple. But I mean, my yeah. thing is, though, like, think about what and had it, to it, have it, been happening with him. He's sitting there on a Zoom call. Presumably, it was not an all male thing, right? Yes. And he, let's call a spade a spade. He probably was looking at a female coworker and was yeah. thinking, all right. Oh, and he just it just couldn't wait. Yeah. Now, like, now the backstory on this guy. This guy was banging one of his superior's bosses. Wait, for real? Yes. I cannot remember the guy's name at CNN, but he was sleeping with his daughter. And it became a an ordeal. I'm he sure also uh regardless of your opinion on abortion or whatnot, um we're going to do heavy topics today. No, no. We went uh, from no. jacking off on Zoom to yeah. abortion. All right. But well, he regardless of your opinion he, he is a fanatic on abortion. And it very quickly became evident why. Because he knocked up a young lady oh, and geez. then pretty much forced her to have an abortion. <laughs> so, I mean, this dude is ripe with so, sexual improprieties. When yeah. he got caught doing this, he was currently banging the boss's dog. No, no, no. This is, this is oh. two no, separate... My, my thing no, is, like, no. where are the Me Too people with this? Like he, he, expo- he exposed holes. himself on Zoom to his coworkers. Did you see his wiener? I'm sure you could. I mean, I mean, how far away the hell he is he mi- sitting from this camera? Andy, let's do the math. Unless Every Zoom I see is penis. chest high. Andy's like, I purposefully keep my bottom half out of it. Well, I mean, he is a, he, <laughs> when he does these podcasts with us, he is laying in his bed in his truck. That's true. Who is in? Full and it's weird. Like, he, but Andy cuts the camera off for about two minutes. I don't know what he's yeah, doing, but yeah. and it's just all. That's when I have to get on the internet. I, I don't have you search. Pick us in the rooftops. This damn song music video. I have no pauses it at like two forty three when yeah. Alexis Texas walks in. <laughs> I, I think what's also hilarious about this is that 
she immediately questions him and asks him, like, did you think about what your co-workers were being forced to see? <laughs> and he immediately is like, oh, yeah, I talked to them about it. <laughs> he's like, that's what got me off. He's like, so no scale of, he's like, scale of one to ten, what'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> did you like what you see? No, I mean, and, and to kind of wrap this up, I mean... My prize Look, winning they, hog. There is a <laughs> <laughs> there is quite a large level of hypocrisy oh, yeah. uh, here because for a number of reasons. But the main reason is uh, there was a sports talk host who went on that same network with a different female host yeah. and said all he agreed with. He said the I first amendment two things uh, absolutely. The first amendment in boots. And you would have thought the world melted yeah. down. So the the gall Clay Travis. Yes. Yeah. The gall of CNN to stick another female anchor and talk about this dude wanking it and how he minutes. has repented yeah i mean come on now like look i get it Let's like just, i'm not a i'm not a cancel culture guy right like but it, there are some things that you know you're just like when you expose yourself yeah. <laughs> but at the same time like what does cnn have to gain for keeping him on television i mean this is wanking it on a zoom call in front of female employees and male employees it's borderline like, assault like i i definitely agree with People be they them making things right and them getting a second chance, but a second chance on CNN. Like, how about just let him go to somewhere in Wasion, Ohio, on the local news and be a legal analyst? Like, that's well, a better place to start off when you're on your comeback tour. Yeah, I was I was reading a thing. There was a thing about a I believe in the 1960s there was like a British admiral yeah. who got caught up in some sexual improprieties and whatnot, and you know he got fired from the British Navy, the Royal Navy, and he essentially went and worked at just some lab for the rest of his career. No. And was never heard from him again. Probably should happen, Jeff or two. <laughs> yeah. To close this segment, I must say, when we started this podcast, not for one split second do I ever think we'd be on here talking about a dude jacking off. No. Well, <laughs> the places you go. The places yeah. you go and the things you see. Just ask what the Carter's at the New Yorker. Yes, well... Carter, that like kind of is, is, is a not a very good segue, but I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I was just watching YouTube music videos the other day. Right. Uh, and. <laughs> yeah, this is a bad time to break this just, up. <laughs> go from the A block to the B block. Yes. They, uh, <laughs> all, right. all right. Google might be. I need to turn my VPN more on more often when I get on the internet, but Google might be tracking some of the things I look at on the internet. There's, there was a young lady um, who just randomly showed up in the Co Wetzel Parker yes. McCollum playlist that I was watching. I say you're blaming it on the Co Wetzel Parker. <laughs> this yes. couldn't be worse timing to bring this up. We can cut the part out. Uh, <laughs> and her name is Savannah Dexter. All right. And I watched the music video. I had the volume low, so I really wasn't listening to the lyrics. What was your favorite part? I wasn't listening to the lyrics very much because the volume was low. I was just kind of had it on. I was cleaning up and whatnot. And I started watching the music video. This is the country aesthetic slapped onto a Cardi B song. It is white girl softcore porn. I'm looking at the cover for Country Girl, her song. Yes. Uh, now. So apparently, yeah, she's a rapper. Yeah, she's and, a rapper. She's, oh, yeah, there's but, nothing country about it. But it's, any like, of this. it's like what they call tractor rap. It's like yes, rap right. for like people who like to go mudding. Yes. And um, <laughs> the, this cover has her sitting backwards on a mechanical bull wearing Daisy Dukes that are literally up her butt. That's in the video. And oh, no, she has on this little like Walmart the... cowboy hat wearing yes. barely a top. Yes, but they've yeah, they, they, the they been cut to almost become a bikini bottom. Pretty much, yeah. Yes. Which, I mean, hey. You guys we complain? Support, we support freedom in this country, and I support whatever rights she wants to wear that, you know? <laughs> I mean, she's an attractive woman. She is an extremely attractive woman. Andy, what are you doing? Put your pants back on. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, stop that! <laughs> no, I'm well, I mean, I Andy, just... For the record, Andy was not tuning it. Uh, yes. Hands on beer. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you call it? <laughs> but, you know, I, I was just... I don't know how this came in that playlist. Video. You don't know how? It's probably, you know, you know who owns YouTube, right? Yeah, they were probably watching Google some stuff. And I searched you probably right? searched yeah, some right. stuff on Google. Yeah. And well, yeah. mm. The VPN wasn't cut on. Yeah, yeah. there's probably a number of factors that are probably telling on me as we speak. But Yeah, th- I would venture to say, because you played one of her songs for us earlier. Yes, I would. <laughs> music I would, is garbage. Yeah, it is, it's hot trash music. Yeah, um, nah, yeah, yeah you're right hot, about the hot trash. Emphasis on the hot, but... She's uh, unattractive. She's an extremely woman. attractive one. And I would empower... Whether or not you, if you like women in general, 
males and females, you should watch those videos. And just leave it on mute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the music is just horrendous. Yeah, I'm sure it is. It doesn't... Um, I'm, I'm seeing screenshots here on Google from the... Yep. Uh, the from music videos and doesn't look it like is, it's... I mean, I have no other way to equate it than tractor rap Cardi B. Yeah. Because if yeah. you've ever watched a Megan Thee Stallion or... Oh, uh, what's her, Car- her new song? Um, thot, thot Shit. Yeah, Thot Shit. I mean, Wait, it, how does it, it, it It's like, put my hands on my thighs, shaking my ass, doing some Thot Shit or something. Yeah, shit I mean, like this, that. this is what yeah. this reminds no, 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 me no, of. No, no, it's not like, how, in how in the, the hell... How in the she, hell is this, this in a co this young playlist? lady? This young lady doesn't look as talented in, when it comes to the rapping aspect no, as no, 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 no. Cardi B or Megan Thee Stallion, but at the same time, it's the same premise. It is. Shake ass rap. Yeah. I've got a name for this segment. Country and cold cans, hot girl minute. Hot girl minute. It is hot girl summer, you know. Yeah, maybe. I thought it was Carter, Vax, I thought it was Vax girl summer. Uh, some people may object. Her rap was very bad. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yes. Um, Speaking of that, now Carter, Carter will like, read it. Uh, we'll, we'll say that till the end. Like, <laughs> yeah, we'll try it all. We'll Carter's not going to comment on people's uh, women's attractiveness anymore. He is now happily and married. He is married to a nice young lady. Nice, nice young, young lady. Yes. yes. Sorry to all of our female fans. I'm taken. So all two, all two of you. <laughs> <laughs> the something number tells one me this show. Country th- something tells me that this show <laughs> it doesn't really appeal to women no. as much. I regret to re- regretfully inform all of you: the number one bachelor on Country and Coke Yeah, he's, he's off, off the, market. the market. Now y'all have to deal with just Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Logan? Yeah, I mean, I'm not married either. <laughs> well, that's what I meant. I'm Logan, not married either. Well, Logan's a better bachelor than you are. Oh, who, who says a lot from a man that can't fight? <laughs> <laughs> YouTube backyard right now loser leaves town match. All right, I guess that's going up on the country and cold cans YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we'll put the video up of Carter leaving town. But it's going to be private, and you have to <laughs> subscribe to the Patreon. Now nah, we're only that's only on OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans, it's like the evolution of PBS, the PBS generation for people on Patreon, <laughs> OnlyFans, what yeah. have you. It's you know PBS. It's, it's <laughs> financed by viewers like you. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> sponsor. Sponsored by Kick Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Top point one percent of creators. All right, all right. So uh, before we jump into music a little bit here, um, I gotta have to give a shout out to my boys, the Pac Nine, NC State, made it to Omaha after beating number one Arkansas in Supers, uh, Super Regionals last weekend, and uh, a team that hadn't lost a weekend series all year. They lost their first series of the year to the pack in the, in the NCAA tournament and Super Regionals. Yeah, pretty absurd fact. They yeah. have not lost a weekend series. Exactly. It's crazy. Pretty well. Like they, and they're playing in the SEC, which is a great baseball conference. Yes, yes. And, um, it saddens then, me deeply that they beat. That they beat. <laughs> then the Friday game, right? State loses 21-2. to two. They're the first team in the history of college baseball to yes. lose a Super Regional game by 15 runs or more in advance. Yes. I, I told you after that like, game, uh, I'm, oof. I, yeah. I was watching like, oof. Yeah. <laughs> that was my it reaction. It was bad, man. Oof. Like, I stopped watching about the sixth inning. Like, I I'm was surprised just, like, you made it done. that far. I had I just I, trying to hold out hope. Well, as, as you know, a not state fan on this podcast, yeah, I was I was soak, soaking in it, injecting it into my veins, if you will. Uh, but okay. the last laugh belongs to d because my team lost. That's so, true. Um, ECU got swept by Vanderbilt in two close games nonetheless, yes, yes, but, close they games. but they just did didn't so. score really any runs at all, did they? No. no. They scored they one. Sh- scored one. Yeah, one over two games. They but yeah, so it's over two games. The Pac nine in Omaha won today ten to four over the yes. uh, number nine overall national seed Stanford. Yes. So we live. We're in the winners bracket, baby. Yes. This is the year, team of destiny. You heard it here on Country and Cold Cans. Next time when you check in, you'll hear the heartbreak of Deberry. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. But if they don't, you know what? Yeah, yeah, it will yeah. literally be like Christmas morning. But uh, all right, so moving into uh, one topic here that we have this kind of music related because. Um, very, very talented and popular uh, R&B singer Macy Gray recently was talking about the American flag. And I, I did a little, for context, because we don't want to just be one of those shows that only reads headlines um, mm-hmm. about everything and just like trashes it based off the headline. There's more than just headlines? You wouldn't believe it if you listen to most people who consume media on Twitter. But yes, there is more than just headlines. Um, I usually like to bury things in about the 22nd paragraph. Yeah, yeah. So here's an article from The Hill um, talking about how she made a comment saying What's that the, Hill? the it, it's a news. It's, it's a media organization that covers like current events. Are they a newspaper technically or are they just like I don't, an I don't online know. They probably started as a newspaper. Yeah. But everything's online now. Yeah, like, right? like, yeah. I mean, come on. But so Macy Gray um, was talking about how the American flag. 
she thought it was time. Uh, put it all in context. Like she thought it was time to change the American flag yes. and um, update it, so to speak. Yes. Said that it was tattered, dated, divisive, and incorrect. Mm. Um, I mean, she did say, like I said, for full context here, that you know America's great and it is beautiful. Pure it ain't. It is broken and in pieces. Um, but she she did like kind of make it more about race than it should have been with the flag. Like, she was saying that all the stars are white, and like, and they need to be different, like, mm-hmm. colors, but the, like, look, we have to be honest about everything. It, it's about intellectual honesty with these things. The American flag's white stars are not indicative of white people. It's just the way the flag was designed. Like, it, I, I'm a person that is very much a fan of the American flag. It's a very beautiful flag. It's a very beautiful flag. I, I think that it's the wrong uh, spirit I guess position to say that the flag is and say that it's tattered old and divisive like I disagree with her on that I understand her point but I just think it's wrong the American look, flag look man big fan I'm drinking right now for the American flag 100% cheers yeah. um, the only rebuttal I would like to have is um, that flag was planted where it's gonna get deep and like might, might make some people uncomfortable. That flag was planted on Civil War battlefields where the Confederate flag was lowered. Exactly. And they raised that flag. Granted, minus a few stars, but, I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with that aspect. Yeah. 600,000 people, Americans died in that one. Yeah. No, seriously. Like, um, nobody's arguing that America's perfect, right? No, but the reality perfect. is... Fundamentally, America is a great country. America is probably the most tolerant country in the world. Yes. And, you know, that, that flag represents what America the, could the, the it, it's a, It's a country founded on perfect ideals by imperfect people. And it's taken us a long time to be able to live up to the ideals well, the of human, which it was founded. The human species is Exactly. Imperfect. Exactly. But yeah. that doesn't mean that the country itself is bad. And, like, Macy Gray is incredibly talented. Like, I guess I've never heard of this one. Never no, heard like, of. trust me, she's okay. incredibly talented. <laughs> like, work, seriously. Yeah. Great R&B artist. But I just disagree with her on this. I, I don't think that we need to view everything through the prism of race when it comes to a well, flag. Now, the, see, now I, 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 one second. These are these conversations that there is no direct benefit from it because we live in clickbait media times. Someone's going to see that and then immediately be like, well, fuck whatever she's got to say. Right. They're not going to. of context and, and behind they're, it. And they're not going to read the context like we did here on no, Country no. and Cold Cans with what her so overall all, point it, was. So all it is, it, it just drives a wedge. It, yeah. So. Because people on the left and the right are stuck in their echo chambers when it comes to these things. They follow s- specific people on Twitter, yes. and they read headlines that are crafted in a certain way to evoke a certain emotion. And to get clicks. And to get clicks, clicks. yeah. yeah. And uh, nobody's going to read the article like no, we did to provide context. People are just going to see the headline? Because oh, she's not Macy? Macy Gray. Like, and Macy, Macy Gray, Gray is yeah. not saying America sucks, right? She said right. America is great and it's beautiful, but it, it hasn't been perfect, which is true. But it's like you're going to have some people that are going to read – one outlet saying that, you know, she hates America and saying, fuck the American flag. And then you're going to have another outlet that's going to be trying to saying. overly apologetic about things. But in reality, you know, I can walk and chew gum at the same time. I can understand her point, but also disagree. Right. Yes. Yes. And that's kind of like why everything's been politicized these days on everything. Yes. So it's like we can't always avoid everything. But I will. One time I will kind of stick my neck out is when I, I do believe America is a great place. And mm-hmm. I think that there is no other country that offers more opportunity than this nation. So mm-hmm. like at me, unfollow me. Don't really give a shit. America's great, but not perfect. Now, throw this in there. Did she make any suggestions on how we would change it? Yeah, she actually did. Now, she actually did. Hear me out on this. Now, if we were going to change this flag, my vote is going to be that we add Stone Cold Steve Austin riding a fire breathing donkey, <laughs> Stone Cold how about, and Beers. How about, no, no, no. How about him riding, r- riding a fire breathing eagle? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, yes. With beers. Stone Carter? Cold and Beers. No, no, no. He'll Fire breathing eagle. Hold on, class Eric Carter. What do you think? Yes, please. Interview. Stone cold on the flag. If you were going to redo the flag, obviously what would you we're put not on serious it? about this. What but. would you put on it? Uh, Doesn't have to be stone cold. I mean, it'd be I, anything. It'd be Chris I mean, Benoit. <laughs> Carter, <laughs> class Eric Carter, big Chris Benoit guy. And on the <laughs> back, it's going to say Murder Nation. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that'd be pretty badass. Which one, though? Chris the, Benoit? No, Austin, no, Austin <laughs> on the fire-breathing eagle. Yeah. Maybe have some Steve Weisers in his hands. 
Uh, Somewhere needs to be a machine gun. It can be a machine gun mount. The, the eagle shooting a machine the, gun. Yes, the eagle needs to have like a turret <laughs> where its claws go, like a Gatling gun. Uh, yeah. But just to add, seriously here, to add on to this, um, I think the American flag's fine the way it is. Uh, you know, no one's ever, we're in a very divisive, like you mentioned. Divisive. Just I've heard it both ways. Repeat the points being said here. We're in a very divisive uh, time right now here yeah. in America. Um, some people are going to look at our flag and see hatred and a history of pretty much controlling our own narrative, sometimes not to the detriment of the rest of the world and to certain people. Um, but I honestly believe our flag does represent one of the greatest countries on Earth. Mm. Right. The, the greatest country the, on yeah, Earth. Thank you. And Official sorry. country in cold cans position. <laughs> and honestly, I don't think the flag should change until in, unless we start adding a few more states. Yeah, of course. If I mean, we do that, add some more stars. Yeah, obviously, so we're going to add stars say. for that. No, no, yeah. I mean, you'd have to add a star if you add another state. Because yeah, the, like, the 50 stars are there to represent the 50 states. They're yeah, not exactly. representing That's the only way I see you should change the American flag. Yeah, agreed. I still vote for fire breathing donkey. What is it with you and donkey? Why, why is he gonna why, why is he gonna ride a donkey? Why is he gonna ride like a stallion or something or something you know, cool? Or the eagle? Because fire breathing donkeys are mean. You've never even seen one. Yeah, I have. They don't exist. They make hood ornaments. Look, just because you watched Shrek yesterday doesn't mean a donkey's got to <laughs> donkey, be on it, man. Donkey. You guys just don't get it. No, we don't. <laughs> you guys have no taste, no class. Yeah, because uh, yeah, the first thing that comes to mind when someone says donkey, I'm like, yes, huh, when I say classy. When I think American flag, I think donkeys. Right. Fire to, breathing and donkeys. just to make this political what an balance, ass. we put Ronald Reagan <laughs> with two Thompsons on one side yeah. in the red column. Yes. And on the blue column, we put FDR in a jet-powered wheelchair. <laughs> uh, and they're in the middle of Stone Cold, Stone Cold in the white section, the yeah. purity of America. There's a balanced flag. It is a balanced flag. Represents yes. both sides. Who's going to fuck with that? We, but FDR. Who's has going to have fight a, that? FDR has a atomic bomb exploding by them. I'm telling you, you go into battle with one of them things flying. Terrorists are going to run and hide. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, they're already hiding. They're going to run and hide more. They're going to start tunneling <laughs> in them caves. No, yeah. Like, like I said, America's great. Like. Are there things that can be fixed? Of course. But, you know, like I said, perfect. Uh, it's a country uh, based on perfect ideals, but with imperfect people. But anyways. All right. Moving into uh, one quick thing before we get to our anchor, th- anchor topic. Did any of you hear the song, The Worst Country Song of All Time? Yes. By Brantley Gilbert, Toby Keith, and Hardy. Ooh, that's hard. No. Okay. Hard, Hardy's on this. Yes. Yeah, he is. That's... I think I have yeah, I think I know this song. Only good part. I didn't of the recognize song. Hardy in it. He was in the second verse. And then, Nothing um, fun. Dirt roads yes. kinda suck. Official country and culture. It's too expensive to pay them. That's why if you if I I'm sure there's a very small minority that like him. Most people wish oh, it was paid. Asphalt is phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. Great one of the greatest inventions of all time. Yes. And uh, my last point Best thanks to sliced bread. Yeah. My last point, Brantley Gilbert sucks. Yeah, I'm not a fan yeah. of Brantley Gilbert either. Yeah. He's like, just kind of there for yeah, I mean, his whole persona is not appealing to me. No, yeah, you know, he wears his hat so low that you can't see his eyes. And, like, on his, on his uh, microphone, he has brass knuckles, like, almost, like, welded to it. Like, come yeah, on, man. Yeah. I've never seen anybody this side of Justin Moore's song, I Could Kick Your Ass. Is Justin Moore could kick his ass. I think they could kick his ass. Yeah. Justin Moore could kick um, his ass. Yeah. Now. It's half his size. On the hardy note, there's a lot of, like, hate towards the bro country. Hardy embraces it and makes it cool. Hardy does it good, man. Like Hardy's so who he is. This is like first before we get he into that. He makes it cool. Sorry, classic rock Un- Carter from a classic rock guy who likes to make classic fun of these rock. songs and rightfully so. How do you feel about the worst country song of all time? I mean, it's a harmless, you know, song just for fun. It, like you said, it ain't gonna be winning no awards. Nobody's gonna be making this the song of the year. It don't hurt anything. I would vote for Song of the Year. Uh, well. <laughs> no, I, 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 I can't say that I agree with yeah. Kyle on that. Maybe you need to be working for take, Billboard. Bro. It's a hot take, man. No. It's a hot but, take. But uh, it's 
it's all right. I mean, I ain't going to be blasting it on Spotify or anything like that. So in short, right. you're never going to listen to it again. Probably not unless y'all play it. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Carter's going to blast it when he pulls up in Western Carolina. Carter's going to be rolling in his Jeep campus. Cherokee with his girlfriend yes. or wife, whatever y'all are now. And um, he's going to be Domestic going. Domestic partnership. Yeah, he's going to be sitting there. He's going to be like fist pumping. He's going to be like, stick a fork in the Constitution. <laughs> I support Kim Jong-un and Putin. And you know, when you when you pull up on Western Carolina University's campus, people are like, hell yeah, man. No, nah, there's a Actually, bunch of rednecks up there. Really? They're, yeah, there's quite a few. I mean, I mean, there's some liberal folks. I mean, that's every college campus. Well, I mean, are you trying to say there isn't no such thing as a liberal redneck, you intolerant fuck? How dare you, Carter? I know some liberal rednecks. How dare you, Carter? But no, like, you're right, though. There's a lot of rednecks. Um, a lot of Actually, people. they're not rednecks up there. They're hillbillies. Hillbillies, yeah. <laughs> but the now, the students, though, it's hippie town. Back in the holler. The students is pretty hip. Yeah, it's, it's a you went to school a, there, you know. Yeah, you're wearing a tie dye nice, t shirt right nice now for goodness sake. Liberals there. I mean, there's not much of an <laughs> agricultural Dude, it's not, college. It's not like all there's about politics. It's okay, Carter. <laughs> I'm messing with you, Carter. <laughs> Carter just gave me a death stare. <laughs> he, was getting, he was getting kind of heated. He there, was. Right? He was like, you what? could see, you could see the engines <laughs> just a firing. He was ready to take D Bay to Pound Town. <laughs> You're going to see that wrestling match on the, on the <laughs> Cold Country and Cold Cans podcast, Patreon. <laughs> Paid for, for only. Not, Paid for not, not, by not viewers like you. <laughs> 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 no, no, like I, I agree that there's a whole lot of different types of worldviews and everything out where you went to grad school. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. As the most educated one here. Thank you, Carter, for your opinion. He's yes, not yet. Know. He hasn't technically had his thesis guy, been confirmed. I don't, I don't so. have the master's degree yet. Oh, so so still until t- then, I'm he still, still is just like the rest of us. I'm him. still technically just a four-year. Yeah. Okay. My apologies. I was trying to give you the benefit of that. You... Uh, don't look at me. He's the one over here cutting me down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you fact check. Slide, you? That's, <laughs> because we, that's because we care about the truth here, and this we fact true. check. Yes. He will be soon. He will be soon. Not yet. Correct. Not yet. I'm the least educated here, so. Yeah! <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, so to your point, you were making about Hardy. Um, Grady Smith actually had a really good video about Hardy that I, I agree with. And this kind of takes us into our main topic today, where we were talking about how um, artists that are kind of like bro like we kind of call them the frat pack yes. in, in mainstream country a little bit. Like artists that on paper, because of the way their music is, like the way it sounds, it's like not super, it's not always that country. It's like heavily influenced by rock or pop or even a little bit of hip hop here and there. Like on paper, we probably, you wouldn't think that we like them. But for context of it on everything, we, there is a time and a place for all kinds of different music, right? Yeah. And if I'm at a tailgate or at a pool or on the beach, like in mm-hmm. a tailgate, I mean like at a football game for NC State, go back. Um, it, you're not going to necessarily play Benjamin Todd. Benjamin Todd's a fantastic songwriter and a good art, really good artist. But you're not going to play that. You're going to play something a little bit more accessible, mm-hmm. um, play something a little bit more bro I mean, you're playing beer game. You're playing beer ball, for goodness sake. Yes. So, I mean, it's like there are some artists, like I don't think there's anything wrong with listening to some, some of those mainstream artists and the ones that are actually like distinguishable. Mm-hmm. Not the random bro with the uh, six foot three uh, chiseled jawline wearing skinny jeans. Like, the ones that are actually making a little noise that have some enjoyable music. Yeah. Like, there's a time and a place to listen to it. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I like some of it. Hardy's one of those dudes, man. Like, yeah. Hardy, Grady Smith said about Hardy, about his last album, A Rock, which I'm actually a big fan of. Good, good album. He cracked the bro country code. To your point. Yeah. He made, took a style of music that wasn't, like, it had its time in country mm-hmm. music history, but it was never really that intrinsically good. And made it better. I've actually never heard that album from him. I've only heard Hicks tape. How does that album compare to Hicks you, tape? You've heard songs so because you've written them with me. I've heard some songs. Song, I know, but I know Hicks tape. How does that album compare to like Hicks tape? Which it's is better. technically it's not better. his album. Hicks tape was kind of like a, a it's basically thing. It's basically his album, but yeah, yeah. I mean, like the, the song "A Rock." Oh, yeah, fairly it's a good deep song. song. Fairly so, deep. The weird thing about Hardy, I actually really appreciate his song. And I know we're, I probably have we have some listeners now that are rolling their eyes at me because I did a little poll on Hardy. With I rolled my own eyes when I thought that when I found that out myself though. But see, that's the thing though. I'm about to rationalize my opinion. Yeah, Hardy is a decent songwriter. To yeah. a good songwriter, changed my mind, and here why here, here why here. I'm, you, I'm here not why here. Change your mind yeah. because I agree with you. <laughs> so like when it comes to Hardy, 
people listen and he does like kind of take a definitely a more commercial approach right like there is references to beer there's references to dirt road and shit like, like that right references like to chewing tobacco chewing tobacco yeah it but it's like Hardy is a guy that he, he he himself says he's been heavily influenced by Brad Paisley you can tell the guy puts a lot of emphasis on wordplay the guy is very clever whether or not he's writing a, the deepest song in the world with, that's a great narrative like Evan Felker which he's not but when it comes to the quality of the song, he's not just writing like I'm drinking a beer, spitting tobacco on the dirt road. Like he's not doing that. Actually, one of the things, like to your point, like one beer is very close to. You. I wrote that song all for years, and then until like two months ago, yeah. You and when you to listen, it. to, it's like with the word there's play an in it, it, and then yeah. all of like what you just said, like that song, yeah. like kind of sums it up. Like there are some lines. You like roll your eyes when you first. Hear it. I was like, hey, this isn't well, actually uh, half bad. There are some lines in some of the songs. Like at the two stick off, stick out on the top of my head. Here is you have like. One, uh, a very, very cliche song, but I think it's done that. He, he He's very good at, like, joke songs that are, like, he's kind of in on the joke with, like, some commercial yeah. country. And two that stick out in my mind are Unapologetically Country as Hell yes. and Rednecker, right? Yeah. So, but Unapologetically Country as Hell, there's a, 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 in one of the verses, he says, I've got a fridge full of beer. Okay, everybody, I'll roll. But then he goes, I've got a freezer full of good aim. That's a clever way of saying, like, you know, he hunts and he's got, like, deer meat and shit like that in his freezer. Like, that's a that's a clever way of saying that. And then the, he has funny lines in that song where he's like, if you can't dip in church, you can't dip anywhere. Like, the yeah, redneck of me is like, hell yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, then you Retweet. Go, Retweet. I like that. <laughs> but then you have, like, Rednecker. My the, town is smaller, smaller than, than your town. town. But then, like, the best part is, like, He's he's. This isn't a serious song. He's doing this as a joke. But yeah. it's like then he goes, "I've got a bigger fucking bass on my wall." That's I mean, he, that's a a play on. I've got a bigger fucking bass on my wall than you do, bro. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, my Hardy, dick's bigger than yours. Exactly. It's it's like a dick measuring contest or a pissing contest. And mm-hmm. but it's like Hardy does good redneck music, but he yeah. does it with a rock edge. Like I've always said, there's a reason that Co and Hardy went on tour together on an acoustic tour recently. Their music's not that different. No, Co's a little bit more. Um. Sadder in his music, I would say. Yes. But their sonic uh, yeah, sounds yeah. they go with, and yeah. and then also like their songwriting, like their music style in general is not that. He's like a a more polished mainstream version of Cohen in some way. I guess yeah, some- right. And I'm not gonna cut you. I'm gonna let you go. All right. If it all depends on that, on setting. All right. Sure. If I am just cruising home from work from a long day that really kicked my ass, right? I'm probably gonna play too high to cry. Yeah. I'm not playing Rednecker. Are you too high to cry when you're driving? Yes. <laughs> Do not drive under the influence. That's dangerous. Our lawyers tell us to say that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if we're hanging out in the basement like we were 15 minutes ago when everybody was on a bathroom break, I was playing Rednecker. Bro, yeah. you're playing Morgan Wade. Uh, that was when they were all up there. When they started walking down. Like, yes, we love Morgan Wade on the show. We say that ad nauseum. Like, she is yeah. one who is a fantastic songwriter and yeah, great music. Match, but, uh, matches and metaphors. But at the same time, like, we do like some of these other artists, and I'm not, I'm not afraid to admit that. Like, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Hardy. I think yes. in in the right context, like his music is good, and he, but he's a, a more clever songwriter than he. There's a difference between Hardy and Florida Georgia Line, and if you're too close minded to actually see that, like that's your problem, not mine, bro. Like seriously, mm-hmm. I've been that person. Like, I, was that I wrote person. one beer all for forever. I was that person until about a month ago. Until the last time we recorded in the country mm-hmm. coal can studio. Yeah. And me and D Berry spent until about ooh three thirty in the morning watching um music videos on music YouTube. videos. Class Eric Carter was here. And he was yeah. miserable at this point and he was ready to go to hell home. So Yeah. But no, like it but made, we kept him against like, mm. a, a rock is um, a good song because it, it it uses the phrase a rock in so many different fashions yes. as the hook of the song talking about the the it is a full circle the, song yeah it, it's like talking about your progression through life from growing up and having to face peer pressure to like drink and shit yes. and then then you good with that then, <laughs> then moving into to buying a rock buying a rock yep. like a diamond uh, ring. Yes. And then I finally, literally thought finally you meant at the end of the day like look we all die man and yeah. guess what you, you put your, you get your uh, name written on what a rock a rock. Yeah. Like it, it's it's a solid song, man. Let's get cremated and buried in the backyard. True. And I'm rednecker than you. I'm rednecker than you, bro. <laughs> but then you have um, like what's the other one that I'm a big fan of? Uh, uh the one that. But, oh God. No, no, no. The no, one he's in it, church in the music video. With? That's not the one. I do like that one, but that's yes. not the one I'm thinking. About. I'm think thinking about, about that. You're talking about gives it heaven some hell. That's a good one. That's like talking about a friend who you had some good times with, but then like you know he dies and everybody's having to sit there. At his funeral, and you're thinking about the good times, and like kind of basically saying, you know, we'll just hold a spot down we'll for just us. Say this on the Country and Cold Cans podcast. I would be mad 
as a motherfucker. If one of y'all are dead and I gotta sit in y'all's funeral, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm gonna try not to die, Kyle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the music video, man. I was like, Houston, yeah. Thanks, Kyle. I, I actually will try not to die. I was man, like, it is a motherfucker. If, I I was go like, to y'all's if you die, I'm gonna kick your ass. As long as why another, the fuck do I have to sit here looking at your dead body? As long as Jimmy another Carter, 94 year old blind man does not hit my car again. Oh, I didn't tell you that? Oh, yeah, okay. I got into a wreck like two days ago. What? The, there's this old man who ran a stoplight, yes. and I was able to turn left to avoid it a little bit. You'll have but, to look at his car when we go out. Yeah, he um, he would have T-boned me almost, like right in the passenger drawer, yes. if I didn't like turn left to go to the turn Ooh. lane because I saw him out of the corner of my eye. Yeah. Then this motherfucker literally like drives straight and doesn't stop. Yes. He was on his way to his doctor's appointment. Okay, so I w- this is an off topic. I am very pro-freedom, but... He shouldn't have been driving. Once you pass 70 years old, you should be required annually to do a driving test. Maybe. But either way. Either way. Either way. I just like, say, maybe an unpopular I, opinion. I went in there and pulled behind the guy, right? And I see the old man get out, and I'm like, all right. So, like, don't get me wrong. I'm very I'm very close to my current granddad, very close to my um, deceased my, grandfather. So I have, I have a <laughs> – I will always show respect to older people. I get out talk to this guy. And he looks at me and goes – Sorry, I can't really see. Is there any <laughs> like legit? He goes, I can't really see. He's like, is there any damage on my car? I can't really see it that well. And what I'm the like, fuck is he doing driving? Seriously, seriously. And then I'm like, um, sir, I was like, y- your uh, chrome on your grill is a little bit dislodged, but not much because he was driving a Tahoe. I drive a Toyota Camry, right? Yeah, yeah. He walks over to my car and he's standing over the side that he mangled, and he goes, is there any damage on yours? And I was like, motherfucker, are you serious? <laughs> But it's like I was very polite, and I was like, "Yes, sir." There's a little bit of damage here, and then I was like, "How do you, I'm just trying to start the conversation?" I was like, "How do you want to handle this?" He's like, "What do you say? I handle mine, and you handle yours." No, <laughs> I was like, "No." I was like, "I'm gonna call the cops, sir." I was like, "We're gonna have to have a report on this." So the cops come. Everything gets straightened out. I told the cop what happened. He had like a the the older guy didn't really have a clue what had happened, and he sa- tells me and the cop and goes, "I guess this was my fault. My insurance will take care of it." He goes, "If." You said the light was green for you. I'll take your word for it. And then it's like, I'm thinking this guy's like 76, 80, 80, 94. So get this. I get the uh, accident report back yeah. from the cop. I look at this dude's date of birth. He was born in 1927. Damn. This this dude was 67 years old when I was born. He was drawing Social Security before I was even a twinkling in my mama's eye. This man could have lied on his birth certificate and fought in the Second World War. Yeah, very easily. He wow. could have been drafted for all we know. He could have been. Yeah. Certainly was drafted in Korea. Yeah. Look, it, Vietnam. Damn. Yeah. He might have been too old for Vietnam. Either too way. Too old for Vietnam. No, but like drafting age. Like there you is stuff, a, it's stuff at 28 and, and the, the, the shit really hits the fan. No, but like, like, anyways, long story short, I was very polite to him. He started off, he was kind of a dick at first, <laughs> but then he was very nice by the end of it. And like, he admitted his fault because he ran the light. And he can't see, and he was driving, driving a 2005 Tahoe. Like, yeah, I hand him it wasn't. Hand yeah, I was like, nah, man. I was like, that ain't gonna fly for me. That's a no for me, dog. <laughs> Big no. Yeah, but anyways, yeah. Hardy. <laughs> uh, nice big tangent there. Yeah. Sorry, I well, thank like, you for filling me in. I'm yeah, aware. no, like you're okay. legitimate though. Like if it had been a little bit further down, like it could. He could have died. He was going like 35 miles an hour when he mm-hmm. hit me. Like. Mm-hmm. Just saying, it could have been mad as a motherfucker at him if I had a good review. Yeah, it, it could have been a lot worse. God, kick Y'all his ass. Y'all would have been playing Give he- uh, Heaven Some Hell this week. Yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> so, but instead, we're recording here on Country Cocaine, so back to Hardy. Um, like, Hardy, the song I'm thinking about is uh, Good Day for the World to End, right? Mm-hmm. He's sitting there, it's like, he treated his his lady badly. She broke up with him and left him. Classic country trope. But then, like, the cool thing is with the hook. He's like... You know, everything's going... It's the apocalypse. Things are like... God's coming back and... You know, peop, the world's Pretty ending. Sweet. He's like, you know what? It's, it ain't a bad day for the world to end because I got nothing left. It's like... It's a cool way to work that into a song. For a breakup song. It's it's unique, man. It's not like Florida Georgia Line on the Sunday song where stick a little with pink umbrella in your drink. Like, no. Like, Oof. It's like Hardy's a lot better than Florida Georgia Line. I will die on that hill. Still yes. haven't heard that album. His it new is. cover, though, of the Polo Mud song, killer. Yeah, that was Big Loud uh, Records, mm. new rock label they started, and that's the first one they um they released. Killed it. He did do a good job. But another one in that kind of frat pack that he did paper, a really good job. 
Uh, he uh, did. Yes. He did. And Kyle's a Kyle's a butt rock fan. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. And too. I know everyone in the audience because D Bear's done polls on this, and he's always, he always makes fun of me. Oh, you like Aaron Lewis? Unironically, <laughs> yes, I am an Aaron Lewis stan. Not the country so much. Aaron Lewis stan, but the stained, the stained. stained Aaron Lewis fan. I will see any one of you on the mat. I have a buddy at work that anytime you bring up stained or Nickelback or anybody from that era, oh, Nickelback was good. I don't the, know why Nickelback gets the hate. Nickelback gets a lot more hate than they should. I yeah, agree with that. But good. like, what's funny is like this guy. Every time you bring up one of those bands from that era with that. The sound that basically every song sounds it's like modern day yeah, I disagree I agree, disagree okay yeah. continue but he's always like yeah bro he's like stained Nickelback I love Christian rock <laughs> <laughs> I think he's he says of, it as a joke I think oh, okay, like, okay, oh, okay, okay but okay. It, it's just like okay. he says that and we all just kind of look at him funny and we're like idiot okay that's funny now <laughs> I think he's okay. thinking about Creed or like Red they're not even Christian apparatus rock. or something Creed like is that. no oh, they're yeah. not Pretty sure almost positive they, they, are. they are not Christian rock. They, no, not. they did label themselves at that. At you know, that everyone. Point. Yeah, lawyer, bitch. No, know, they everyone. didn't. They've always said that they were a rock band who has some Christian members, but their lead singer, I believe, and we can fact check he this. He was I an atheist, wrong, I believe. It was not only that, but like, he was having like a threesome with like, I think it was Kid Rock and some other like, starlet. And, and then he formed a band, Alter Bridge, which was everyone that wasn't in Creed but him. Hmm. I believe I'm correct in saying that. Miles Kennedy? They formed Alter Bridge? Yes. They did Metalingus? Yes. Is Metal- that Wait, Metalingus? Wait, Metalingus? Nah. Edge's theme. Yeah, nah. Oh, I'm almost that positive. Edges? Miles yeah, Kennedy. Do do I don't think Scott. No, Miles, Miles Kennedy, I think. This did. might need to get covered in a podcast. Yeah. But, uh, Miles Kennedy. Yeah. Edge's theme was, you think you know me. It's Alter Bridge, yeah. Oh, okay. All of his themes. Maybe like it's that. everyone but the singer. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. The rated R superstar. Because I don't think Creed guys. The rest of the episode is Miles Kennedy. It is. Yes. Is everybody talking about I need to fact check this. Yes, my Kennedy. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> no, so, another guy I actually like a lot, and it's not, he only has like three songs that I really dig, but it's like, it's pop country, man. Like, it is. I'm not going to sit here and act like it's not. Um, yeah. And it, I won't try to compare him to like anybody like Evan Felker or BJ Barham because he's not the same, but I mainly like him because his podcast is really funny. But that's Ernest. He has I, a cool I podcast called Just songs. Being Earnest where he talks a lot of these pop country dudes and like he's really funny, man. Like seriously. Yeah, like I said, I know him from when he was on You Bet Your Radio yeah. and I was like, I like this guy. Yeah. And I heard him when he was on uh Theo's podcast yeah. too. I was like, I like this well, guy. The, the thing that I like about Ernest and even more specifically Hardy is like Hardy, I could easily see if he wasn't famous <laughs> and he lived in North Carolina, like we would be boys. Yes. Like, he, he just, like, he's a similar to us in a lot of ways. Like, not necessarily, I don't know what he listens to, so I don't know about musically if he's similar to us. But I would like, say if he was in our friend group, he would obviously be the most outgoing of the group. Maybe. Maybe. I think I've, I've heard. I've, he's not that, he's not as outgoing as you think he is. I think I've heard, was it him that said he's really not yeah, that outgoing? I think it was I him. think it's him. But he loves golf. Like, he loves crushed beers. He loves, you, he still dips. You want to know, I think, the worst like, thing I heard The thing he says, that? he has the same sense of humor we do. <laughs> I'm almost Those positive. Are all three things I do. And I'm yeah. almost positive it was Hardy. <laughs> the most crushing story of all time. He hit his one and only hole in one by himself. Oh, so there's no no, 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 no. He didn't. I, I know the story. He um he didn't use his club. Him and his, oh, yeah, some, him and his buddy. So Hardy is a lefty, and his buddy he was playing with is a lefty. <laughs> they decided to, they had played like 36 holes that day, and they decided to play nine more. Six, they play a lot of golf, man. And Hardy, it's tiring. It's it is. It is. I get barely get through 18. If I'm not having a good round, which I don't a lot, no, like never do. I'm tired after a round. to be done after nine, and now you just start pounding beers. <laughs> there you go. But Hardy, like, was him and his buddy decided to, you know, play with each other's clubs for a few holes. That and sounds so much like an innuendo. Yeah, I mean, it's golf. Why are you trying to dismerge the game like that? No. No. I'm just saying. <laughs> Carter, you never this is the one that, that ends good at the clubhouse, right? I don't remember. Herpetology. You all never swap turtles or swap snakes. Play with each other's snakes. snakes. If, yeah. But but then I think after, maybe, the maybe what I'm thinking is when after he hit the hole in one, he went and bought the clubhouse, like everybody in the clubhouse, and buy them around. Yeah. And it was an entire church group. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do believe he, that's how it that ended. Was, but his buddy let him keep the club though, and like he swapped mm, clubs because yeah. since he hit it with that it's pretty, club, it's he, pretty dope. Yeah. yeah. But it's like now I think he has one club. This like. Not matching his set, so he has to get a new one. But at the same, same time, if I hit a hole in one, I don't give a damn. I'd put it in a shadow box. Yeah, exactly. Frame it. Exactly. Yeah. First word problems. Hold on. Uh, let's take a quick break. Uh, um, what's the updated score on the Arizona Vanderbilt with our new 
Country Cocaine Compadre Clinton. Intern Clint. Six even, bottom of the twelve. Bottom of the twelve, six even. Who's uh who's at the plate? Vanderbilt. Let's let both these teams burn through their arms for so the Wolfpack on Monday play a depleted squad. Anyways, thank you, Clinton. That's Clint, like Clint Eastwood. All right, so uh, yeah, like I said, I like Ernest and Artie. I don't know any Ernest songs, but I do like Ernest as a person. That I I've never looked up the He's songs, funny. but yeah, that's a funny guy. Yeah, there, he has a song called Sugar that's like really poppy, but it's kind of cool. And then he has a new one called American Rust, but Cheers is so cliche. But at the same time, you find yourself going like it, it's like the end of the hook of the chorus goes, um, "Crack, uh, open a bottle, crack a can, raise your hand. Here's the beer. Cheers." Oh, it's like mm-hmm. it's like it's very cliche. Yeah, it's, it's very listy, but at the same time, it, like, it sounds kind of cool. It works. Yeah, it's something that like at a at a pool, everybody would love it. Like I'm not gonna sit there when I'm trying to listen to, you know, Turnpike or something like that. I'm, it doesn't compare, no. but I mean, it's it's enjoyable. Is there is there something wrong with enjoying some music? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. No, but everyone I, has a guilty pleasure song. No, yeah, I love Taylor Swift. That's that, my guilty yeah. pleasure. Not kind of like a song. Yeah. Well, we've talked about the duo of the trio, so I'm guessing about anybody can guess who the next one's going to be. Who is the next one? Oh, uh, well, Mr. Tennessee himself, Morgan Wallen. Oh, yeah. This is going to go over well with our audience. <laughs> Man from just outside of Knoxville. Yeah. Beautiful Look. country. Yeah. Hidden behind some dogwood trees. Look, call a spade a spade, right? No bullshit. Some of his music is enjoyable. Sorry. I didn't. Sorry. At first, I really didn't like the double album. I think I've even said on the podcast before it came out that he had no business putting out a double album because he can't even make a full album. Yeah, you did say that. <laughs> I ate my words bad. It, it, when it first came out, I still that, didn't that, like That's it. not to say that every song is intrinsically good because it's not. No. I like that album like, quite a bit now. But that doesn't make it good. I like like I love the song Dick Down in Dallas. It's not a good song. Can say, well, I mean, yeah, I can say that like um, you know, I have a bunch country of ass shit's not a good song, no, like, but it's fun. The chorus that says, um, "What's that one where he's like, he's like, I'm a redneck. How about you or whatever that shit is? Like, I mean, sorry, yeah. like it, it can be enjoyable, but it's not a good song. Yeah, I have a lot of opinions I can't justify. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, like their opinions. For there a are some good songs on the record though, like yeah. that people don't want to admit, but there are. Like, Sand in my boots is great. Sand in my boots is a good song. Like Quentin uh, Time is a good song. Wondering about the wind. Quentin Time is a Wondering Eric Church. Wondering about the wind is a good song. Eric Church wrote Quentin Time, by the way. Really? Last song on the record, yeah. Mm-hmm. Eric Church wrote that. We have okay. a rough right relationship. You and Eric Church, yeah. It's because yeah, you because wrong. you have a trash opinion about yeah. the trash ass opinion by Andy. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, redneck, red letters. Red, red, dirt, red dirt. dirt. That's yeah, a good. Yeah, that's song. a good song. It's a solid song. It's. I mean, that song but, grew on. A lot of his songs is are cliche. Let's call it, call that what it is. Yeah, Andy, you are, are you still such a big fan way. of Still Going Down? Has that song grown on you? Because yes, when first came out, you, you didn't like it. It has grown. Crashed it until the end. Of I time. still say that the chorus. He let himself down on that chorus because he had pretty good verses, and the chorus it could have been a lot I, better. I'll tell you a song that grew on me. It's dangerous. Yeah, I, I said that was good. Yeah. D. Barry yeah, was yeah. a big fan of it from from the no, yeah. I wasn't such a big. fan It was an enjoyable song. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I can see me sitting on the back of a cop car banging now, my head. My on favorite the song. Oh is, yeah, Morgan. I bet you can. Now my favorite <laughs> favorite song uh, is "Whiskey My Way." Yeah, that's a Tommy Ratka, right? Yes, because I kind of felt that you know sometimes you just gotta get a little courage to whiskey your way on over there when you get a little bit of confidence. You, no, I don't. I don't, I don't do that. About then, <laughs> yeah, I know what that it's song about. is not what that's about. But yeah, that's I was about to say, that song is about whiskeying your way over a heartbreak. I know, but that's because Eric couldn't do it. <laughs> Tequila just wouldn't do. I have, yeah, right. Like I said, it's an opinion I can't justify. That's let's the way I a, interpret it. Okay, I get. I get let's that. Let's take a, a brief uh, break here and say to our classic rock correspondent Carter, all these pump pop country guys, what do you think? Hardy's okay. I like him a lot better than a lot of pop country guys. Sure. Um, or like some of the other stuff that we've like listened to before. Uh, what was that really awful rappy country song you showed me once? Savannah one? Dexter. No, not her. Oh, okay. Um The one... Ah, I can't remember the name of it. Jason Aldean. It might have been a Dirt Road Anthem. No. Where he was rapping? I forget what the name 
know if it was. There's been, there's, 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 been, a, there's been a few songs. We've been subjected to a lot of shitty pop country songs. Yes, so. we've been subjected to a lot. We've been subjected to a lot of country artists who think they can rap or yeah, like or they think they're being edgy. or like or like do like a slow R and B song with that or like sexy like that, talk, like Sam, Sam Hunt. Who you're thinking about? Bring Sam up Hunt. in a small town. That's it entirely. Yeah. That that might be it. I remember there was another one where a guy tried to like kind of copy the Sam Hunt style. Right. It was a more noteworthy artist who got more popular in like the two thousands. Yeah, and did one, and I can, I can hear the tune of it in my head, but I can't remember the lyrics. Tim McGraw, thirty five hundred OBI. No, it wasn't that. Um, anyway, the uh, party's fine. I don't know a ton about a lot of the other guys. Morgan Wallen. I mean, he's literally been all over the place this past year. Yeah. He's pretty much the biggest name in country music. Eh, second biggest. Luke Combs well, is Well, he was bigger. for a while the biggest name. Yeah. Um, I think I think Combs is bigger, but I, I see your point. He's in the conversation. He's, he's definitely in the yeah. conversation. Um, but if we're having a... I'll put it this way. If it's just me, you, and D-Bay chilling in the basement, yeah, we'll play some Turnpike. Sure. If I'm throwing a rager, Turnpike's not... If it comes on... There's probably like six people here that get hyped. I, I yeah, understand and I that, them. and I get that. Yeah, and I'm one of them too. I understand but, that, and I get that. And, but my, my, I, I, I am, I am, I'm, I'm backing your point up. Is what I'm saying. They make country music that people, for the masses, that want to listen to, that, in a way, can kind of bridge a gap. Like before them, Some like ways, what yeah. were you going to play other than Turnpike? That's not Florida Georgia Line and that kind of stuff. You can play code and probably. Shit. Yeah, but you I think I wouldn't get like some of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I was saying, but like if you're not gonna, if you're gonna play mainstream. What are you gonna play? Yeah, like yeah. there, there was no like really good mainstream other like before that. You play Florida July. It's kind of embarrassing to play. But, like, like what you're saying. But, but like you know, like, we were in college and you were like at a party and they start you playing. Hear they Gilbert start playing. Shit. They start playing cruise. Yeah. the Nelly version and all the girls with Maybe like their little song. sundresses and their cowboy boots on who probably have. Hey even, man, I'm pro that. Hey, hey, I'm pro that. <laughs> like touch hey. dirt and all the guys in there with their with their button up shirts who are like, ah oh, yes, I'm very country I and I I love being from the South. I feel attacked. <laughs> Quite a bit. You kind of did attack. Ah, but there's there is dirt on my shoes and I hate this. But I do love because in, some in Greenville, North Hawaii. Carolina, y'all would wear button downs downtown. We did that too. We did that, and then we turned nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and after that, I wore a nice T-shirt. And then, a, yeah. and then a year after that, Kyle wore Crocs. I can't say nothing about that. That's true. I would go downtown. We're, my twenty-third birthday. Been, I, <laughs> my twenty-third birthday. You were in the back of the truck in March at Wrightsville Beach, wearing yes. Crocs and basketball shorts because you said, "And I quote, I don't give a fuck." Yes, and <laughs> I believe our good buddy Drew Bennett said, "You won't fucking do it." And I said, watch me. <laughs> Bro, I'm fucking married, not legally, but in the not sense legally. that I've been dating the same woman for, oh, goddamn, 11 years. Uh, oh, you just wrecked the one kind of cocaine Who in the fuck? I got damn press in downtown Wilmington. Downtown. My biggest True. concern. And I proved a point, and I did it. You but when you it. did that, you were double fisting my that biggest night. concern of that is that you were, you were riding 30 minutes in the bed of a oh, truck. Was, and it what was it, 45 degrees outside? My ass off. It was cold. It was cold. It was and you were short, short sleeves and Crocs. Yeah. It's like, yes. this is not a good idea. No, it's not a, it was a horrendous idea. And Andy, uh, did, did you get sick in the Uber that night on the way home? No, no. And he's done that many times. <laughs> you and I think we pee on opposite ends of a truck in a that, parking lot that that might downtown. Been, that might yeah. I hate that Carter couldn't have been on that. Um, trip because Kyle, Andy, and Clint were all on that trip, but Carter couldn't make it because he was in the mountains doing hippie shit. He was finding snakes. Yeah. My point is... Andy found some. ...that this comes on at a party, and the people who are actually fans of, like, more traditional country music are not going to be be embarrassed or be like, wow, this shit sucks, while all the rest of the people who just listen to radio country music... Are like yeah, this shit slaps. Yeah, Andy and I have said from the beginning that when it comes to country and cold cans, like we are not as cozy with the mainstream as say like whiskey rough, but we're not as like hardcore on the tradition as like some of our other um, compatriots in the um, podcast world, yes. that, of which we have good relationships and they have awesome content they put out. We're a little bit more middle of the road. We're a lot more like Grady Smith in our our views than some of the others. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I mean, it's just it is what it is. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you can fuck off. Well said. But, anyways, hey, so Clint, Wallen, Hardy, or Ernest? Yeah. Wallen. 
Fair enough. He says Wallen. Yeah. Thank you, intern Clint. <laughs> I'm hoping to get Clint behind the mic one day. Clint actually can be really funny. He just didn't want to do it today. But Clint is just like too cool. So he has to, <laughs> too cool. He has, to, he has to keep that persona. Look, this guy drives a motorcycle. He does. He, he's really. <laughs> I mean, he's got a full beard. He's got a, long, he's got like a Duck Dynasty beard and long hair and has yes. a Harley Davidson. Yeah, he's really but it has purple lights on. If it. I was a girl, I'm not gonna finish that statement. <laughs> <laughs> he's, about, he's about six foot four. He's a cool dude, man. He has to keep a persona. <laughs> <laughs> Jacked is all hell. He meant hung like a horse, Carter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. So like, who else in the mainstream? I and mean, we've talked about Hardy and Ernest, and like Andy has talked to Nazim about his secondary man crush, Wallen. He loves the mullet. I wish I, could, I man. I'm not gonna say I wish to grow a mullet because it's gonna happen one day. And you, you can't count guys like Eric Church or Dirk Smelly or some of the ladies like Miranda Lambert. They predate. They, they put out. No, it's not. They that. predate the. They don't old, put out Bro Country. They put out just good music. <laughs> Black wasn't a great album. Yeah, that's up. Yeah. It's, it's, so you get some they're, great. They're, outside of Turnpike, there's not an artist alive that doesn't have a song that I don't skip. So, sorry, not sorry. Yeah, okay. I actually have no idea about mainstream radio. Really, I really don't know what's even out there. Andy started reading and then just like, I don't know what's happened to him. Well, I get into Spotify, and Spotify makes it kind of hard to bridge out of your own little lane because you kind of, it makes all your radio like stations or the daily mixes oh. all kind of gets programmed to you specifically. You put, I'd put Riley Green in that category. Yeah, I would. Eh. I don't know, like maybe. Riley Green is weird because like his sound is. Riley Green is between definitely Morgan country, Wallen though. and Luke Combs. I think that Riley has the country sound of the three you mentioned. Yeah, I, I would Riley's, say Riley's the criticism on Riley, and I, I understand it from the people in the independent that like put a heavy emphasis on songwriting, like we usually do. Is that Riley's music is a little bit listy? Yeah, it's very cliche in some ways, but Riley's music is enjoyable and it's good. And one thing you can't say about Riley Green is say that his music's not country because that his music is one hundred percent country. The biggest thing with him for me is it. He he goes to things where he doesn't write a lot of great songs, and you know he can though, because he has some that are so sure. good. And then at times, but he, he does just write doesn't. good, enjoyable. Well, he songs. had two songs on his EP that were almost identical. It, but that's my biggest thing about, about his yeah. EPs. If it wasn't for keeps, trucks and if I didn't wear boots, he keeps yes, almost identical. Songs. He puts out the, the other same two stuff. songs on those EP were good. Yeah, um, I can't remember the names of them because I can never remember names of songs. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, that was a while ago. Yeah, I haven't been back to listen to it either. Would you say John Party kind of bridges that gap, or is he still? Yeah, John Party's too country, man. Like he, yeah. I, I think, yeah, but he's he, really popular. He's not bro country, but yeah. he's no, not he's bro not. country. But like John Party's that guy Didn't in the John mainstream Party that even the independent people like him. Didn't John Party do a song with Tommy Rhett? Tommy Rhett. Okay, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah, sure, he did. Right. It was. I think it was a number one hit. But yeah, uh, no, it was beer. Beer can't fix. That's right. Solid song. Yeah, but. I mean, you guys have any other thoughts? I, I do not. Yeah. Like I said, I'm an ardent, hardy defender. So, Ooh. anyways, on that note, hey. for this episode of Country and Cold Cans, I'm Logan sitting here with Andy, Kyle, Clint over there in the corner, and Class Air Carter. Whoop, whoop. We'll see you next time. One, two, three, four.